Okay. Howdy, everyone. Uh, today, I got. I think it's going to be an easy one. Um, I've done a, done a lot of blower motors on these trucks over the years. They're all a little different. Uh, my favorite are probably the Kenworths because you just pull out the glove box and that blower motor squirrel cage is sitting right on top, um, right behind the glove box. You just pull the screws out, pull it out. Some of these companies, I think they get off or they enjoy making it difficult. I'm sure sometimes it's kind of a an engineering back and forth for leg room and things like that. But this is a newer truck to us. It's a 2016 4300 International. <laughs> it's got a Cummins, but it's still an International. I remember, what, you know, you see old International trucks, and they think those things went forever. They probably, some of them still run. It's a little, I'm a little bitter after the Max Forces, but uh, anyhow, I'm going to crack this baby open and see how hard it is to get to. I'm assuming it's in here. Looks like I got a screw, a Torx here. And this is all one piece. And then this is all one piece. All the way to right here. So I'm going to have to take this off. I'm thinking I can take this off, but I don't think I have to take this whole strip off. Anybody that's ever worked on this strip on any vehicles, they know... Most times you can't get these out, or if you can get them out, they won't go back in. So hopefully it's that screw, this screw, and some tabs, and this will all come apart. But I'll do that in time lapse so we can get, get this thing moving. There were actually quite a few screws holding this thing in. I think all told I had to pull about eight screws out. I'll show you as I go where all the screws are. But this was actually a pretty simple job, all said and done. You can see these three screws across the top, and then there was another one across from the bottom. Okay, so I was able to pop this down without taking this completely off. There was some screws across the top here, three of them. There was some down that side that weren't in. But I'm pretty sure that some of this, one of these things here is, is going to be the squirrel cage. I'm thinking it might be this right here because you got the wires running in. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go get the new one. And by looking at the new one, I'll be able to see exactly how this thing is attached. So I'm going to go out and get the new one. Okay, got the new one here. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow. That does not look anything like that. Sometimes you can see something that looks familiar. Or I bet that's a cover there. So let's pop this cover off here. And I bet we'll see something that looks like this. There were two T20 torques on each side holding this whole thing together. And then it came off. It was kind of like a slide-in type deal. It was a T20 Torx. All the screws on this project are a T20 Torx. I had to remove the little side kick panel thing so that I could get to the plug on the wire. So that way I could get a little screwdriver in there to help unplug it. I did end up taking two of these screws out here. They came right out. They weren't a problem. The four screws holding this compartment in were uh, two up top here and then two down below right here. One on each side. There were two screws holding the blower motor into the front cover there. There was just one on each side. And then it slid down into a groove there. There's foam on the face of the blower motor. And then you have to remember to take this little wire bushing out right here. I was able to get it out one-handed with my thumb. Because of the foam, it really is kind of a two-handed thing. You have to wiggle it back and forth to get it out. There's actually some solids in this one. You can see the air filter for the blower motor here is completely packed. You want to make sure to clean this as often as necessary. If you're working on gravel, you should probably do it at least once a month, or at least when you change the oil. It's kind of difficult to get to on this truck. You kind of have to take half the dash apart to get to it. I wish that engineers that built these trucks took the serviceability into account when they were designing this kind of stuff. Next, I just compared the old blower motor to the new blower motor just to make sure I had the right one. I was a little concerned because the old one had this foam on it. 
I tried to pull it off and it started to tear. And then it dawned on me, maybe the foam for the new one is still in the box. So I glanced over and there it was. I'm gonna keep these cutouts from the inside of the new foam. Who knows what you could use those for? They'd be really good cushion for something. When I'm dealing with something wide like this with sticky on the back, I pull part of the backing off just a little bit to hold it down. And then I slowly work the backing off as I go across, sticking it down. Otherwise it'll start to stick to itself and everything else. To get the blower motor back in, you kind of got to work it back and forth and stuff that foam in there. Just make sure the foam doesn't peel off. It went in pretty easy without peeling off for me. I had to uh, bump it a little bit with my hand to get it to go the rest of the way down. You have to cut this little zip tie they use for shipment, and then you can run the wire back through. It comes with a new rubber grommet. Then you just start putting it back together. Don't forget these two screws on the inside of this cover here. I forgot to mention that I unplugged this blend door wire here. Just make sure you plug that back in. You kind of got to fish the cover underneath this wire here. It's a little bit finicky going back in. There is a groove that goes all the way across the top and it needs to fit smoothly in that groove on both sides when you're starting and then it'll slide right in. Don't forget to plug this clip back in. Put the four screws back in that hold the cover and the blower motor in. I just used a little bit of Dawn dish soap and some warm water and scrub the old filter out. There's five screws holding this front cover on. There's three across the top and two on the bottom, one on each side. There's these tabs holding this side corner kick plate in. The tabs didn't really seem to slide in very well. It seems like people have been prying this apart to get to that filter for a long time. So just do your best to get it up in there and then it'll be held in by a Christmas tree that's up against the side there right by my left hand. This top cover has these little pegs in the corner and they fit into these slots right here. It doesn't seem to really latch in very well, and it seems like it would vibrate and make a bunch of noise. Just for fun, I looked these covers up on eBay. They're going for about 150 bucks, and they'll probably vibrate and make the same noise as the old one. Yeah, I'm doing a tape job, but at least it's quality tape. The only thing left to do was to test it out. The old blower motor was making a bad vibrating sound. I tested this one out and it was nice and quiet. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that on video. Thanks everyone.